where you started and the, the premise of uh, the, uh, the, the fact that Latin countries are not uh, homoge homogeneous, they're, not, they're, they're actually very different. They are, although I would say the, that they are more alike than just about any other region of the world. So you're absolutely right. Argentina is very different to Mexico, and Mexico is different to Cuba, and Cuba is different to Ecuador. Uh, but they are more alike than, say, Asian countries, uh, where I find that they're incredibly uh, different to each other. But there are, there's APEC, and uh, there is, I mean, there's the UN. So I, I suppose that you can make the same argument about the UN. So, I, you know, it's important that we have these bodies where we bring people together, where we can solve problems where they can be solved. Uh, we are, we're members of the WTO, and we're trying to get an agreement across 141 countries, a trade agreement, which if it, if it went through, uh, the estimates are that it, it would lift 500 million people out of poverty. Uh, at a time when we all agree we should be giving aid to some countries, this would be the best form of aid we can give anyone, trade with them. Uh, the problem, as you say, is how do you get 141 countries to agree? So in the meantime, what we've done is let's go and do it bilaterally. And let's have bilateral agreements while we wait for 141 countries to come together. Um, now, to, to that point, I just, just want to uh, repeat something I said. We, we have 11 trade agreements bilaterally. Um, and we're questioning whether it's too much and whether we've done too much and we want to keep going in that direction. Uh, the, the European Union has over 40. Uh, Mexico has over 40. China is negotiating with everyone to have a free trade agreement, which essentially gives them access, gives them preference. So we can do a lot more bilaterally, and we should be doing a lot more bilaterally while we try to make these multilateral, um, these multilateral organizations work. And I think there's a certain responsibility to try to make them work. Um, although, to, to your point, they're not always, uh, they don't always run as smoothly as we'd like. Yes, please. So what is the U.S.'s role uh, to be played in Latin America? Sure. Well, again, uh, I go back to that our, our relationship today is one of maturity, uh, which means that we are dealing with uh, uh, partners that, uh, equal partners, as opposed to a, um, uh, a relationship that entails some uh, subservience, which I think if you go back 30, 40 years ago, it was, it was sort of meant that, or it was perceived that we were, the, um, we were the authority figure and they had to follow our lead. I think today, you know, the, these are democracies, they're going their road, I think we have to respect that. Uh, what we can do is uh, we need to trade more with our neighbors. Um, trade is, uh, is very beneficial in one's own geography. We have a lot of efficiencies. We have a lot of ways to make our own country stronger. Uh, people talk about our com competition with China and how China is uh, a, com a very competitive force in this global economy. One way to allow the whole hemisphere to compete more effectively in our country is to have uh, hemispheric supply chains, hemispheric uh, computer systems, uh, hemispheric uh, relationships when it comes to trade. So trade is one example, and we still have a long way to go uh, to, um, to, to do more trade. And, I, and I'll point to uh, a, a subject of some controversy, which is NAFTA. A every number that I look at tells me that NAFTA has been a success and has been, in, in many cases, an overwhelming success. Uh, if you look at the 14 years before NAFTA and the 14 years after NAFTA, unemployment, growth, you name it, uh, NAFTA has worked. Uh, so that's a good example of, of uh, free trade. I also think, uh, and this is um, beyond my 
my level of uh, uh, my, my uh, lane or my responsibility in commerce, uh, but I think there should be more interchange with uh, Latin American students. I think we can do a lot to uh, promote uh, scholarships for minority students in Latin America. Um, there are still huge minorities in Latin America. There's still a huge level of uh, illiteracy. And I, I think we should be doing everything we can to help them uh, help their whole society, 100% of their society. Uh, not just you know the 10 or 20 or 15 or 5 percent that have traditionally uh, run their countries, and that's an area where I think we we are we are doing some things we should be doing more. Um, but again, the the probably the single biggest area is uh, look at them as mature relationships. Understand that it's not about uh, the U.S. Um, looking at a territory of the world that we own or uh, uh, that, we, uh, th that we administer. We have influences, but these are sovereign countries. These are democracies, and I think we should respect them as such. 